it is time to wrap up the remaining books that I read for February. Let's jump right in. Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to the Continuing Chronicles. It is already time to discuss the remaining books that I read for the month of February, so we're gonna go ahead and dive into that in just a second. I managed to read four more books after I did my mid-month February wrap-up, but I will admit that towards the end of February I got very very slumpy and I'm not entirely sure why. I just had no motivation to read whatsoever and I don't really know if that is because I'm working remotely and so I don't have as many opportunities to listen to audiobooks and because of that I was having to kind of like make up ways for me to listen to audiobooks if I didn't want to sit down and diamond paint. So I would go make myself clean something just so I would have the opportunity to listen to an audiobook. I don't know if that had something to do with it. I don't know if maybe I just wasn't fully into the books that I had remaining on my TBR. I really don't know, but I really just didn't have any interest in reading. I also didn't really have any interest in filming or editing or anything like that. So I believe I probably missed one or two video uploads. I just didn't really have any planned content and I didn't want to have to force myself to think of something just for the sake of content. And so I missed, I believe, one of my normal two Tuesday uploads. So overall, February has just kind of been like a meh month. So over the next few weeks, I'm probably just going to gauge what's going on and just make sure that I'm not forcing myself to read, that I'm not forcing myself to film, that I'm not forcing myself to do anything because I really don't want to have months and months of slump like I did last year. By the time you see this, my March TBR will have already gone live and it's semi-ambitious for the way that I've been feeling, but hopefully I can kind of snap myself out of whatever fog that I've been in and get more fully back into the reading group. But now that that unnecessarily lengthy introduction is out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the final four books that I read in the month of February. If you'll remember, my mid-month February wrap-up ended on a DNF, which was very disappointing, especially because it was one of my most highly anticipated reads of February, but it just did not work out for me, and I am so glad I didn't finish it. And luckily, the next book that I picked up, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, was so lovely and heartwarming and charming, and it was just like the cutest little palette cleanser that I really, really did need. This is a very short book, and it is told in epistolary format, which makes it even shorter. It makes it a very quick read, and I think that's just kind of what I needed. And on top of that, the characters in here were just a lovely bunch of people. If you don't know what this is about, this is basically following Juliet. She is an author. One day she is informed of this literary and potato peel pie society in the island country of Guernsey and she becomes absolutely fascinated by it and she kind of wants to write a story about Guernsey as well as the German occupation of Guernsey during World War II. And so she starts soliciting the residents of Guernsey and they start writing her letters. And so you're reading her interactions with these people. You're also reading her interactions with her publisher as well as her best friend and so on. So this really is just letters back and forth, back and forth. And then eventually she does end up going to Guernsey and just falling in love with the place and the people and building amazing friendships and relationships. And it was just so sweet. If you really just want a sweet, charming, quick read, this is it. I gave this a four stars, but if I'm being completely honest, I'm probably not gonna remember it. It's probably more like a three, 3.5 read just because it is very, very short, but just the warm and fuzzies that it gave me near the end of the book, I feel like it deserves a four because it really is super charming. This also really does find a digestible way to to discuss some of the things that happened in World War II because all of the characters in here were affected by World War II. One in particular was deeply affected and you kind of find out more because you're following this character but indirectly you're following her through the words of people as they talk about her and what happened to her during the war and so that was definitely impactful. It was heartbreaking and so even though overall this is a very light toned kind of book there is a harder hitting element because it does deal with World War II and this was beautifully portrayed in here as well. So yes I will go ahead and stick with my four stars and I highly recommend if you are into historical fiction or like I said even if you just want the warm and fuzzies this will do it for you. Next on a whim I actually decided to pick up Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. I read this book years ago and I mean years before I had even my Goodreads which I started in 2012. So even though I read this book this book was not even marked as read on my Goodreads. And because I do love Kristen Hanna I wanted to go ahead and reread it but also I was really interested in watching the Netflix adaptation so I went ahead and read this and I really really enjoyed it. Overall this is a book about friendship. You're following Tully and Kate. They meet when they are teenagers on Firefly Lane living across from one another and it is about their journey together as they grow, as they experience experience challenge and heartbreak and loss and everything in between. It is about their struggles. It is about them hating each other sometimes but loving each other most times. And I thought it was just a really beautiful depiction of friendship. So I did give this a four stars. I will say that if you were interested in watching the Netflix adaptation and you've never read this book, you can absolutely watch it without reading it because they changed almost 
every detail in the show. The only thing that really stayed the same was it was a friendship between Tully and Kate and then the characters that they have surrounding them. So there were the same characters that surrounded them, but the circumstances, everything was changed in there. So it is very, very different, but they stand strongly alone because like I said, it really is about a friendship. And the adaptation does an amazing job of documenting this friendship. I really liked how they were portrayed. I really did enjoy the show immensely. It's not like I was so attached to the way that the book went that I couldn't enjoy the show because that's not what it's about. It is about the trials and tribulations of these two women and their friendships. So if you are a fan of Kristen Hanna, if you have never read this book, I would highly recommend, especially if you are interested in it. And if you would like to watch the adaptation and you want to read the book first, absolutely do it because you're going to enjoy the book and you are going to enjoy the adaptation, even though they are definitely different because at the heart of it, it is about Tully, it is about Kate. I felt really blessed to have witnessed their friendship and to have gone on their journey with them throughout the book. And Kristen Hanna, as y'all know, is a literary heartbreaker. She doesn't pull punches and it's the same with this. So this book will break your heart. It will make you cry but you will connect to these characters so intensely. You will be angry with them a lot, but you will love them a lot as well. And I just love books that can do that. So it is absolutely worth the read. I just want you all to know that you don't have to read the book to enjoy the show or vice versa. After I finished Firefly Lane, I went ahead and picked up The Mistake by L. Kennedy. This is the second book in the Off Campus series. This follows Logan, who you do meet in the first book. He is the very best friend of the main male character in the first book. And at the very beginning of this book, he's having a hard time because he's actually thinking he's in love with his best friend's girl. Now that's the relationship that you follow in the very first book. Yeah, so he's having a hard time because he loves his best friend. He doesn't want to have these feelings, but he's stuck in a fraternity house with Garrett and he's seeing Hannah all of the time and he's just having a difficult time. And Logan is a major player. And so in order to cope, he goes out and he basically bangs anything with boobs, right? And one day he thinks that he's headed to a party, but he gets the location wrong and he ends up knocking on the door of Grace, who is a freshman at his college. And they end up spending the night together watching Die Hard and then things kind of escalate from there and it is about their growing relationship. Now of course this kind of contains the trope of the the bad boy. I mean Logan is not really a bad boy but, but he is a notorious player. And then you have Grace who is a freshman. She is a virgin and she's not really willing to let that go so easily. She's going to give Logan a run for his money. So Logan never expects to be swept off his feet by this girl but he is and so it is about their developing relationship and the conflicts that go on and everything in between. And then similarly to what happened in the deal there are a little bit more deeper elements to this. Logan has a very difficult family life and Grace is experiencing turmoil with her former best friend who was her roommate and things just went down with them as well. So there are some other side plots going on here that add a little bit more depth to the story. Overall, I thought it was a very cute and sweet relationship. I liked watching their journey. I liked watching them come together and then go apart and then come together again. So far, I've only read these first two books in the Off Campus series, but overall, I really enjoy them and I definitely want to continue because they're such a good combination of everything. Decent combination of angst and then sexy times and then conflict and harder hitting elements. So overall, I've just really enjoyed my time with the off-campus series. I think I'm only going to give this a 3.5 stars, but to be honest with you, I don't really think that's the book's fault. Like I said, I've been feeling very, very slumpy and contemporary wasn't really where my mind was at. A lot of the shows that I'm watching right now are very dark in nature. They're very thrilling. They have some kind of disturbing content to it. And so that's more where my mood is but not with this. And so I wasn't fully invested in this. I wasn't fully in love with it, but I think that was more where my mind was at, not necessarily anything wrong with this book. But like I said, I still enjoyed it. I thought it was a sweet story and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 3.5 stars. And then the final book that I finished was The Meaning of Birds by J. Robin Brown. If you'll remember, I received this book as part of the book drop subscription service that I recently started. This was one of the first books that I ever received. This follows our main character, Jessica, and it is told in her timelines now and then. Basically at the very start of this book, you realize that Jessica's long time girlfriend Vivi has suddenly passed away due to illness and Jessica is not coping very well. And so you're following her journey in the present as she's trying to deal with that grief. And then you're also getting snippets of the past when she meets Vivi and then as their relationship develops. So this is definitely queer. It is definitely harder hitting in terms of there's a lot of grief, especially because Jessica lost her dad when she was very young. I believe she was nine years old when she lost her dad. And since then she's been dealing with a lot of psychological issue, a lot of anger. In fact, she frequently loses her temper and blows up and she's seen a therapist and she's been trying to work through it. So she definitely has a lot of grief inside her. And now in the present day, it's compounded by the loss of Vivi because not only has she lost Vivi, but she has lost her will to draw and create art, which is something that Vivi really inspired in her and encouraged her to do. And now, even though she loved drawing, she no longer wants to do it because it is attached to Vivi. So Jess is basically spiraling out of control. She's making a lot of really bad decisions. She's pushing a lot of people away. She's basically hidden inside her grief and she's not doing the smart things. So this is about her and her journey with that grief and her 
trying to kind of basically dig herself out of this hole and see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then again, you get those snippets of her in the past with Vivi. And to be honest, there was just something about this that did not work for me at all. This was the one book that I chose to read physically for the month of February. And even though this is a contemporary and it was fairly easy to digest, I just struggle with it. It took me like a week to read the last 60 pages just because I didn't want to. I didn't feel connected to the story. I didn't feel connected to the characters and quite frankly just pissed me off. I was so frustrated by her because she was so selfish. She used Vivi's death as an excuse for everything. It was her excuse for not doing what she needed to do, for picking fights, pushing away and being mean to her best friend and her mom and her sister and everything. She was just so selfishly in her grief. Now I understand that grief is very personal and in some ways it's inherently selfish, but because of the way that she was acting, I just couldn't care about her. I couldn't connect to her and I just didn't really feel connected to her relationship with Vivi. I don't know, there just wasn't anything about this book that really spoke to me or connected me to it. So I just didn't care. And because of that, that made it really hard because you're supposed to care, right? You're supposed to be grieving with Jess. You're supposed to be grieving the loss of Vivi. And I just didn't because I spent most of this time disliking Jess. So I think I'm gonna give it a three. I don't think I hated it enough for it to be a two because there ultimately really wasn't anything inherently wrong with this. I was just going through a slumpy reading month. This wasn't doing it for me and I didn't like the main character. And so it is what it is. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a three star and move on. Okay, so those are the four books that I finished in the month of February. So let me go ahead and now run through the prompts that were there for the February round of the My Bad TBR game and if I was successful or not. That very first draw for that round gave me a number two. I moved on to a free space and I didn't end up adding a book for this free space. Next I drew an eight. I landed on book box and for that I chose Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pimbro because that is currently the oldest book of the month book that I have on my TBR at this point and that is the only book that I decided not to read for the month of February. I will not be rolling it over and you will probably already know that if you've watched my March TBR because it is not included in my March TBR. I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul it. I've heard a lot of really negative things about Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pimbro, and I'm just not interested enough in the story to give it a shot. I really am not bothered by the fact that I'm going to unhaul it and I think that's a sign that I can just let it go. So it's gonna go. Next I drew a seven. I landed on the prompt to read a contemporary and I chose The Mistake by L. Kennedy, which I did read. Next I drew a five. I landed on the prompt to read a new to me author and I chose Hour of the Assassin by Matthew Quick and it was okay. I've basically already forgotten everything about it and so that was a three star and it's gonna be an unhaul. Next, I drew a four. I moved backwards. I landed on the prompt to read a romance and that was From Here to You by Jamie McGuire and y'all know how that turned out. That was a big fat DNF and certainly an unhaul. Next, I drew a queen so I immediately was able to move into safety and now my safeties have specific book prompts attached. So the prompt that I landed on was Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I did read it. I did enjoy it and I gave it a four star. My final draw was a 10. It landed me on the prompt to read a historical fiction and for that I did read the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. The Meaning of Birds was an extra book that I threw onto my TV. It did not satisfy any prompt, but of course I did read it. Same with Rescue You by Alicia Whistler. That was another book that I got in the book drop subscription service. I did read that. I really enjoyed it and I gave that a 4.5 out of 5 stars. All right, y'all. So as you can see, my February TBR was pretty successful. I read every single book but one and that book is getting unhauled, which I do consider a success because that is one less book on my TBR and one less author that I have to worry about. All right. And that is all that I have for you today. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I have read and what your thoughts were. I would love to know and please also let me know how your reading month was in February. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post formal content on Tuesdays, sometimes Saturdays, and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.